Welcome, Salar here. I hope you guys are doing well today. We are about 10 hours out as I record this um, from the, the full moon in Libra astrologically or in Virgo astronomically speaking. Um, I want to take a moment to welcome you all. Welcome if you're visiting for the first time. I invite you to stay only if you are in alignment with my energy, my frequency, and my message. Um, welcome if you are returning. Oh, uh, welcome to my subscribers and those of you who tune in. Thank you to those of you who are coming in from my other platforms, from Solara Speaks, from Daily Alchemy with Solara, or from my Substack. Um, yeah, I'm just closing out now my Substack Q&A. We just finished not long ago, and it was a lovely uh, turnout. So for those of you who are watching that showed up, um, thank you. Thank you. It's always a beautiful time with you guys, and I look forward to seeing you again next month. Thank you to those of you from Solara Speaks especially who um, already, you know, uh, bought up all the tickets for my um Road Back to Wholeness small group session coming up next Sunday on the 31st. Um, I didn't even get a chance to come on here and to share it here, but um, next time I will do that on the community board. It's something I will be doing um, probably every month, the opportunity for small group um, sessions that are all about helping you to get back to the next level of your own um, journey towards wholeness. And that is across all planes. So mentally, spiritually, emotionally, and physically, we deal with, with all aspects of returning to the wholeness and the fullness of who we are and activating um, our truth back here on the planet. So um, check out the community board. I will make sure to uh, to share <laughs> when uh, uh, that uh, next event occurs. Okay. Thank you to those of you who've been making donations. I really do appreciate all the ways you guys have shown your support. It means more than you know. Thank you. Um, let's get into this. I'm kind of tired now, so it probably will not be a long reading tonight um, or a long uh, Tower Astrology Ascension report, but we'll, we'll get into it. So we have um, the sun in Aries at five degrees and the moon in Libra at five degrees. And not for nothing, we also have Mercury in Aries at 23 degrees, which gives us five, five, five energy. Okay. And what is interesting about this is that this is the third full moon of 2024. And all of the previous full moons also occurred at the five degree mark. So last month's full moon in Virgo happened at five degrees. And the month before the full moon in um, Leo also happened at the five degree mark. Now, the five degree energy is very much connected to um, the chaos and upheaval that must come when change is knocking on the door, right? So um, the five, astrologically speaking, is a degree of Leo. Um, and uh, in the tarot, it's connected to uh, the Hierophant, which is a Taurus card of the major arcana. So this is already telling us that um, something is happening in accordance with Leo energy, Taurus energy, Hierophant energy, however you want to, to look at it. And um, what I'm seeing here, what I've been picking up, um, is that there is, uh, through this full moon in Libra, there are certain energies that are closing out that have contributed to the systems, the institutions, the traditions, um, all of the various um, ways we have had the matrix be upheld by way of energies, entities, um, agendas, all of those things are, um, through this full moon, eclipse are being eclipsed out and um it's a little bit bigger than just being eclipsed out what i'm really uh, getting and i've been feeling it for a while and my guides took me back to the reading i did on the new moon in libra where um i was saying that there was a death portal that's that was opening well it, it seems that that death portal has opened quite wide at this point and around the full moon in virgo i started picking up on this extraction vortex energy that was coming through it feels like um that energy that was beginning to widen um, through the new moon in Libra up until now, six months later, has been a, about creating some kind of a vacuum through which these energies that are dead and no longer support our new realities are being sucked out. And um, 
bear in mind that it's not something that's just happening because it's happening because those of you who've done the work of purging yourself of the energies that supported the timelines that had you stuck in the matrix fuckery and karmic loops, you didn't pick up those timelines again and so they're starved and they've got nowhere to go. And so now those timelines are dead. And so the timelines that were not picked up again are about to be purged from the planet. And how is that happening? Well, the way I was seeing it, what I was connecting to, I saw it in meditation that um, through Aries season, many of you, Aries is the energy that reconnects us to our I am truth or even our ascended mastery, right? So it helps us to connect to the fullness of who we are and our gifts um, because we reaccess our sovereignty um, and our God power. You could put it that way also. And so for those of you who have been on that journey diligently and are rising higher this Aries season, there are some of you who um, whose rise into your truth and your power is very intricately connected to the grids of the earth. And um, the equinox fired up the grids and the eclipse energies are going to further power up the grids um, as well as, as other things that are occurring planetarily and energetically speaking. But for many of you, um, you hold codes that as you access your truth, as you access your power, you are bringing power back into the true grids of the earth. And one of the things um, that the matrix shut down um, and through the inclusion of its false grids that were feeding off of our fear and our pain um, and all of the lower vibrational energies and hence the reason why they had to keep us stuck um, in these trauma loops in order to feed their false grids. One of the mechanisms of the true earth grid or the new earth grid that was shut down through their shenanigans was that it's naturally, uh, it naturally purges the, the energies or the timelines that no longer are needed. So everything um, in life has a, a, a regenerating, recycling, death, birth um, energy that assists um, things, uh, assists in keeping things in balance or in stasis. Now, when the Earth is um, Earth's harmonics are in correct alignment, we have these portals and these opportunities that align with with certain. Um, certain uh, uh, planets, but especially the moon every month. But there are different um, planetary alignments, um, lunar phases, especially the full moon, where these portals are designed to open up to clear out the dead energies that are no longer, um, that are no longer serving in, um, in uh, helping to maintain the true harmonics of the earth. Now, because the matrix wanted you trapped in a loop, trapped in karmic spells, trapped in like a container, going around yourself in circles and not knowing that's what you were doing, energetically speaking, that aspect of the earth, the, the true earth grids was locked down, meaning that we were constantly swimming in a soup of the same energies and not realizing whereby um, the whole point, Earth is not here for you to be on lockdown. It was designed for you to uh, experience a different level of evolution based upon your ability to embody and um, materialize who you are, cosmologically speaking, and to be able to um, experience that. And as such, you're not supposed to be going around yourself in circles. You should be able to replenish yourself. The earth should be replenishing naturally. Um, and the only way that that can actually occur is through all of the mechanisms that support the true harmonics of the earth. So literally, energetically speaking, we've been living in trash. Okay, we've been living in the same energy, cycling through it time and time again. And so now what's happening is that a lot of you have risen into uh, the truth of your power, which activates certain codes within you. And you coming into that activation also activates the grids of the earth in accordance with who you are if you have those galactic codes. And those of you who have those galactic codes 
are the true guardians of Gaia, for one thing. A lot of you have been here from the very beginning, <laughs> you know, um, of this cycle of Earth, if not even from the very beginning of the, the first cycle of Earth, uh, which is a whole different thing. Um, but those of you who are the guardians are the ones who they've worked very hard um, in trying to keep you asleep so you wouldn't um, rise and, and, and get to a place where you could activate yourself. And so uh, this might be you if you're doing a lot of heavy physical purging through the cycle, because as you purge physically, you're not just purging yourself, you're purging the earth. You, you are facilitating in um, a lot of these energies that people are picking up on. Everyone's talking about, you know, what's happening through this eclipse window is happening because of you. Okay, so um, this full moon in Libra is opening up uh, this energy where by the new moon in Aries, which is occurring at 19 degrees, which is a number of divine alignment, it's the sun card, it's another Leo energy. So, you know, you've got the, the, the degree of Leo happening through the, the full moon in Libra. And, um, and then the new moon in Aries, you have the, the uh, tarot association of Leo happening through the 19, meaning that 19 is the number, uh, is the sun card in the major arcana. So it's the card that aligns with you coming back into wholeness, having recovered all your fragments from all the fuckery of the matrix. Okay, so um, that new moon in Aries is really about opening the door to a place where nothing and nobody can hold you back anymore but yourself. That's what it's coming down to. Nothing and nobody will be able to hold you back anymore but yourself. Once upon a time, you had all kinds of other energetic resistance. You had other beings. You had the, the, the lockdown constructs of the matrix that kept, um, that kept the, the earth under um, energetic imprisonment. All of that has gone, is going, and is being sucked out. And come the new moon in Aries, a new door is opening whereby none of that stuff can really touch you anymore unless you haven't cleared the densities within yourself that still believes and aligns with those old world energies. So the full moon in Libra right now is about the clearing of a lot of parasitic energies, those energies that have been eating off of your life force in order to keep you stuck. Those energies existed on every plane. I was speaking about them in my Solara Speaks video as it pertains to your physical health and how almost all disease is a result of parasitic energies and entities eating off of you, of your systems, right? The matrix doesn't want us to know that. It's why um, I was sharing the example that a lot of these um, anti-parasite, anti-fungal uh, drugs are actually quite potent in, in uh, curing a lot of these lifestyle diseases that they said um, are incurable, even cancers. And that's coming out in, um, you know, scientific journals now. Okay, so the fact of the matter is that you were not created to be diseased. You were not created to die by way of disease. Um, disease is a uh, consequence of living in a false matrix, living in a stagnant energy cycle where you're constantly going around and around yourself in the same energetic filth, creating the same uh, manifestations, but with a, like a slight change, so you, you weren't noticing it at the time. Um, the, the matrix was an energetic, like a trash heap, um, energetically speaking. So that is being um, a, like obliterated. So now your ability to connect with your true regenerative abilities it's the, the channel now is open for you to do that with ease. The only thing that's going to keep you from being able to actualize that is your own ability to reconnect with that truth in your mind, believe it and follow through and do what it is that you have to do to awaken that in yourself again. But in terms of it being available to you, it's now, it's now coming back. So this eclipse gateway, courtesy of this equinox, is lighting up the new earth grids, they're powering up and they're powering up for you, but also because of you. And the powering up of the grids means the reconnection, the full reconnection now of your rainbow bridge, meaning that you are able now to literally walk on the earth planes as you are cosmologically with no more 
um, no more, um, nothing else uh, trying to bar you except, again, your own mind. Okay, so the next step of the journey for many of you is going to be undoing even deeper programming that has kept you out of not only um, your, your power, but also your gifts, your resources, your remembrance of how you actually wield your magic here on the earth. The next step is uh, like truly reconnecting with that and the planets, the grids, the eclipses, all of that is supporting you and I've been picking up a very um, heavy time of teaching that through the 8-8 portal of this year, many um, many of you, this, this energy is going to become more and more solidified through that 8-8 um, portal also. Um, very powerful Leo energies at play this year. As I said, the 5 energy is a an astrological degree of Leo and 2024 is a uh, number 8 year, so it's connected to the strength card, which is a card of Leo, as well as the 17 um, breaks down to an 8, which is the star card Aquarius. We're very focused right now, we're very focused this year on activating ourselves into a new golden age by clearing out the inception energies that caused the demise of the previous golden age. And this, um, the first few months of this year have been extremely focused upon clearing those densities. And now as we go through this full moon in Libra portal, we are being assisted in the clearing out of the detritus of the the rubble and the the, the the things that aren't going forward with us and we have um, willfully let them go through the purging process and by not picking them up again as our truth. Okay, so um, this full moon in Libra is bringing things back into, at the risk of sounding cliche, back into balance. Okay, and this energy is going to work for you the most powerfully by you tuning into the power of Aries and Libra energy. So first and foremost, you need to have your head on straight about who the fuck you are, meaning there's no more dilly-dallying about who you are. Other beings can dilly-dally about who you are. That's their problem. That's, it's not even their problem, really. They can dilly-dally about who you are. They can be on the fence about wanting to believe that you're capable of this. It, it's not your business. It doesn't really matter. Do you know who you are? And are you able to proclaim that? And I'm not even just talking about it with your voice, but I mean in it within your soul and within your mind and within how you, you move and you, um, you navigate your life now. Are you moving now knowing who you are? proclaiming it with everything that you do. That's the Aries energy, right? And it's stubborn. It won't let anyone talk. Don't let anyone talk you out of who you know you are at this point. Nobody, nothing, and no one. And the Libran energy is still dealing because the, the moon will come and, 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 and cause you to deal with the shadow aspects um, that you haven't yet owned, you haven't yet accepted. Um, that you're still rejecting in some way or that are out of balance. And that will often have to do with moving away from your heart's truth and using your mind to overwrite your heart. Libran energy helps to put an end to that. Libran energy is very big for helping us to stop the self-sabotage and to come into so much, uh, such deep harmony with self that we no longer self-sabotage, self-betray, and self-reject. But there's something that's very connected with the systemic cause of the self-rejection and the self-betrayal that's coming to a close. It's like there's an energy of, of, of of uh, like um, God being back on the throne. And when I say God, I am talking about the, the God within you, the God particle that has rulership over your energy field is back on the throne. And as such, there's no more uh, betraying self. There's no more doubting self. There's no more living like you're a peasant in your own fucking reality. Um, this is, and, and there's no more of these, um, there's no more allowing these systems and these external energies that were feeding off of your ignorance to continue to exist because you won't let them. For as long as you are standing in your power and these 
systems, institutions, whatever they were, needed you disempowered in order to survive, they die, they crumble. We're already seeing that happen through this eclipse gateway. It's going to become even more pronounced. Go ahead. Thank you. Sorry. Okay, so um, let's look at the tarot for this. Okay, so the sun in Aries at five degrees. Aries, of course, is the emperor, but it's also the fool. So the Aries energy speaks about the establishing of something. It talks about the establishing of your godhood, the establishing of your sovereignty, but also the establishing of your liberation, your freedom, and your ability to move as you as you as you choose to in accordance with what it is that you need for your own evolution and journey. That's that's the fool energy of um of Aries, right? <clears throat> And this is the two of wands. Something is beginning, something is taking form, okay, through the sun um, in Aries energy of this full moon in Libra. Something is taking form, something is being lit up, okay, so we are at the um, inception of a new energy, a new cycle, a new era, and how we wield the power of the fire is totally up to our ability to own it, okay. So um, the moon in Libra, Libra is of course the Empress and the Scales of Justice, okay? So this is shout out to the Divine Mother, the Divine Feminine Energy, bringing back our regenerative processes um, back into harmonious union on the earth, raising the harmonics that allow us to, um, to, to, to consistently um, regenerate, rebirth ourselves in accordance with the seasons, the cycles, and our power. Okay, um, so uh, the the five degrees is the the two of swords. Okay, so the two of swords speaks about it, it speaks about a few things, but um, one thing that's coming through is be aware of, of those old blind spots um, that that have that have tripped you up before in the past. Um, whenever there's this kind of up level, there will always be the energies that are familiar that want to come and take you back into the old cycle. That's just um, how, you know, busting out of the, the matrix spells, it's how it works. So just be aware of, of your blind spots, you know, um, know yourself inside and out and your weak, your, your weaknesses at this point. But that uh, two of swords energy is also quite stubborn. It will sit down and it will only pay attention to what it needs to pay attention to in order to um, maintain its seat of power. So this is what you need to do now. Like a lot of the old world energies were doing that. They were doing whatever it took for them to maintain their false seat of power. And now um, the tables have turned. It's time for you to sit down and do whatever you have to do to maintain your true seat of power and authority over self. Let's see if anything else is coming through. Definitely like tables have turned, tables are flipping kind of energy. That was coming through for me earlier on today, even as I was um, as I was meditating, I was seeing that the old world grids have been completely um, disconnected and the new earth grids have come back online and we're going through a repowering process right now as we get more and more rooted into, the, the, I don't even want to call it a new reality, it's a reinstated reality. Um, th this is how you've always been and this is how you are and how you were designed to be before you um, came through that veil of amnesia and the seven rings magic of the matrix and you forgot. You were programmed into forgetfulness. So, um, you know, this is a, 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 a big time uh, like remembrance really is what it is. Um, uh, this is also where the, the, the scales start to be to be rebalanced, right? Um, in accordance with what you've allowed to to let go through this uh, cycle. Um, another energy that was you know picking up on again, it's the clearance of parasites, those energies that were eating off of your life force and keeping you down in order to, um, to, to live off of your pain, um, systemically, collectively, they no longer can exist 
um, and they only exist in our reality personally for as long as we still are tuning in to them as being powerful or we are ignorant of them. If we are fully aware of their devices and we are standing our ground against them, then they are dead and dying. And so what you will continue to experience is the die-off effect of these parasites that once upon a time were feeding off of you, running your reality, causing you sickness and all manner of things and you didn't even realize and everything in the matrix told you it was something else. It was something else, right? Mercury in Aries at 23 degrees. So Mercury is making their way through Aries and I believe um, once Mercury, April 1st comes around, Mercury is going to pull back and go into retrograde. Um, I believe Mercury will be all the way, well no, Mercury will already have entered into Taurus, I think, when um, in a week's time when we go into retrograde, I think so. Anyway, um, Mercury is making um, its way through the final deacon of Aries. So Mercury is the magician. We got Aries energy again, the fool, the emperor, and the 23 degree mark is the four of wands. So Mercury is speaking to us. Mercury is all about spirit and the um, our access to, to information, divine cosmological information, in order to help us to come into alignment with our truth. Mercury is speaking to us about um, a new new establishments being formed. And the 23 degree, not for nothing, is a degree of Aquarius, okay, astrologically speaking. So there's a new establishment, a new order that is being established on the earth through your ability to rise into um, the new order within. And again, it's not a new order, it's a revisiting of your truth is really what it is. But as you continue to rise in that, then there's a new establishment that is happening on the earth um, that facilitates your ability to be in your power and to be sovereign courtesy of this age of Aquarius to 23 degrees. But the two and the three breaks down again to the five. So this is speaking about the setting and the establishing of a new foundation, right? And the, the foundation has already been set spiritually. This is what Mercury is tuning you into. The realization that your table has already been set Everything is already in alignment and, and everything that you need to put you back on track is already established in the heavens and now it's your job to align your mind first and foremost as well as your emotions with that truth so that you can make it real um, on the earth planes. Okay, so Mercury is speaking about touching down um, and reconnecting back with your true energetic foundations in order to pull them through. So what do I mean by that? I mean, you are literally, your energy field, your bio field is a fucking universe over which you are God. You are God over your own energy. And um, as such, you have the ability to do things that you can't even imagine. I can't even imagine yet, you know? Um, and Mercury is helping to put you back in touch with that reality through this full moon in Libra and through the retrograde, because a lot of what I've been picking up about this Mercury retrograde is it's going to be a reinstatement of the information we need in order to activate um, these spiritual truths on the earth planes, because we've already been plugged into the earth and we're the rainbow bridge. And now the only thing keeping us from actualizing our divine and cosmological truth and reality on earth as it's written in the heavens is our ability to align our minds align our minds and our hearts and our actions now with that truth the matrix cut us off from that truth it did it energetically they did that energetically through their spells um but they also did that through the um programming so 
that's what a lot of the rituals were about. They couldn't destroy your cosmological truth in the heavens, but they could create rituals whereby you would connect with false narratives that you then would materialize because that's how your energy field works. Whatever you think, you create. What you think about yourself, you're creating. What you're thinking about another person, you're creating in the shared energy space. What you're thinking about the world is coming into existence. They knew this about you. They knew how how you create, how you manifest through the mental and the emotional planes based upon what it is that your mind is connected to, right? So instead of um, helping your mind to align with your cosmological truth, they cut you off of that energetically and then programmed you into a false narrative that they created for you and for the collective that you then manifested through your energy field because you believed it and because you were taught it and because everywhere you look that's how everyone else was living and that's how this whole um craziness came to be and and uh be, you know proliferated over time so now those um, energetic constructs that kept you from connecting with your truth are no longer there right except you now must connect with your spiritual truth, which requires for you to overcome the programming and the limitations of your mind that has you believing anything about yourself that is that limits you out of your truth. Okay, so for, for all of you, that's going to be different. Okay, so there are things that you can do that within the constructs of this world and this earth and its energy matrices, um, you've been told are impossible, but they're not impossible. And they're definitely not impossible once the grids are fired up and once um, the as above truly becomes as below because you're back in divine alignment. But your ability to actualize that is based upon your ability to connect with that and believe it. Okay, and Mercury is helping to bring the changes around within your own mental and emotional body that are necessary in order for you to actualize this, okay? Because, um, you know, we, we're entering into the age of Aquarius. This is the water bearer energy. This is bringing back the wisdom of the waters back onto the earth, the wisdom of the wave energies, um, the, the wisdom of how we we program the all <laughs> through our voice, through the waters, um, how it's always been us. We're bringing that back onto the earth planes and Mercury in Aries is uh, reconnecting us and helping us to remember how do we do that? How do I program the waters? How do I program my cellular waters back into their right harmonics? Can I even do that? Because the matrix told me I can't. The matrix said I'm going to die. The matrix said that once I have this disease, it's over. The matrix said that I need medicine. I need this. I need that. Yada, yada, yada. Okay, well, whatever it is you put your faith into is what is, is going to be your lot. Do you believe that you can walk on water? Do you believe you can program the waters? And if you believe you can program the waters, do you know you can reprogram the waters within your own body? Do you know that there's no voice that has a deeper authority over your truth than your own? Do you know that there's nothing they can throw at you, not with their frequency fuckery and biological warfare and all the other shit? There's nothing they can throw your way that you can't power yourself out of. You have every single tool. You are the magician. Mercury energy is helping you to remember that. You have no limitations. You only have the limitations you were programmed into. It's a program. Shatter it. Venus in Pisces and Mars literally just entered Pisces, I think maybe yesterday or the day before. Venus is in Pisces at 16 degrees. The 16 energy is interesting. We have the North Node is, uh, the nodes are at 16 degrees too. And when, um, on the day of the equinox, was it Mercury was 16 degrees Aries? And when it, 
um, retrogrades back, it's going to move forward into 16 degrees. There's something very uh, powerful about the 16 degree mark of Aries. Um, I was writing about it for my Substack um, crew last week to the power of the number 16, and 16 is the tower. So Venus is, uh, there's something, there's something a crumbling <laughs> through this full moon in Libra energy and uh, it's happening in the Pisces. So could there be a further tearing and rendering of the veil? <laughs> um, could the inversion be really, uh, could this energy be fucking up the inversion big time? Oh yes, the remnants of what the, what, what, what um, the inversion is clinging to? Hell yes. You know, um, have uh, the, 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 the energies that kept us out of living beautifully and bountifully and in alignment with our divine feminine wisdom and truth. Are they collapsing? Are they being made? Um, are the, the invisible ties and strings that held them together being uh, brought forth into the light? Absolutely. I was writing about this. Um, I've done another collaboration with Demi Peachel of the Starfire Codes for those of you who are on Substack, and I'll put the link on the community board also. Um, and I was writing about how, I think it was in that, that I was saying that if ever there was an energy where the wizard is about to be exposed, you know, it's going to be courtesy of this eclipse gateway. Um, you know how at, in the Wizard of Oz at the end she's so afraid of this wizard who's going to do all of these things to her and then she opens the door and she finds out it's this old ass, wrinkly ass man who's just, you know, uh, manipulating, using technology designed to, to scare the shit out of her. Yeah, this is the energy of like, the, the Toto has, has, has found out that there's a, the wizard is behind the curtain, is pulling at the curtain, and, and Dorothy's like, wait a hot fucking minute, who is you? You can't be the great Oz. Yeah. Mars and Pisces at one degree. So Venus and Mars are together again in... Well, they won't meet again, I don't think, but they're together again in the same sign. They're together in Pisces. So they're fighting together for um, for a few things, because the Piscean energy, yeah, it's about the tearing down of certain structures that have upheld um, the lies that have kept us bound. Um, the Pisces energy being the last sign on the zodiac wheel it's all about, it's the sign of the zodiac that facilitates our imprisonment or our escape, okay? Because what one, what, what is a sign strength is also its weakness, um, because we deal with polarity, not duality, but polarities, right? So all polarities exist in order to be harmonized. So the Piscean energy um, can liberate and it can enslave. Um, and so there's a fight against the enslavement and there's a fight for the liberation that the Pisces energy supports and promotes. And the Piscean energy is what reconnects us to our innocence, the reclamation of our innocence, um, the reclamation of our child essence that the matrix first um, takes from us in order to keep us uh, cycling through. It's through the attacking of our innocence that the matrix wounds us initially and then continues to traumatize us, to keep us fragmented through that childhood wound. And it's through the Piscean energy that we overcome the shenanigans of <clears throat> the child, the, the wounded child energies that are designed to keep us in arrested development so we don't move past the cycles. So Mars is, I feel like Mars is beginning to tell a new story in the Piscean energy, but Mars is also in the caboose behind Venus again, helping as the new story, the new Piscean energies are being laid down, also helping with the demolition of the energies that have to go. So the 16 degree energy is um, the Venus in 16. Venus is the Empress. 
um, Pisces is the High Priestess and the Hanged One. 16 degrees of Pisces is the Nine of Cups. The 16 degree energy astrologically is of Cancer and it's connected to the Tower, okay, which is Aries and Mars energy. Okay, so um, this is to do with the reprogramming of, of the grids also. Um, the reprogramming of the grids is coming through here. Why was that coming through, Venus, Venus? As I was reading it, as I was channeling before, something else is coming through. Oh, because of the, the Cancerian degree is what connects it to the grids. Um, yeah, so this again is about the crumbling and the, the destruction and the clearing of the energies that supported us being out of alignment with our true nature and that we're supported by the grid. So this is more to do with the clearing of the old world grids is, is really what it is, both Venus and Mars. Um, supporting the clearing of the old world grids in order that the new earth grids can be more profoundly powered up. Mars is the tower card and um, Pisces again is the high priestess and the hanged one. One degree of Pisces is the eight of cups. So um, I feel like the, the eight of cups is a walking away from but it's also a walking towards. Um, so this is like the walking and eight is connected to this year, 2024, um, the Eight of Cups. Uh, it's connected to the Strength card and the Tarot. So this is speaking to me about the walking uh, away from, um, from a very, very old ancient story. This is the walking away from the Inception energy from the previous Golden Age, which is the Age of Leo, that um, gave birth to where we are now, to the... To the uh, the monstrosity that became the matrix, the, the seed point energy, um, we are walking away from that from good, but we're not just walking away from it without taking it with us too, because there is a lot of wisdom to be accrued from the Pisces energy, and um, Mars is helping us, I also feel like it's helping us to, to glean the wisdom from the Piscean age that we actually need to move forward in this new age. We don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, otherwise we will have to learn um, lessons, the same lessons we've already learned um, in a different way. So we, we let go and we discard the pain and the trauma, but we make sure we hold on to the golden nuggets of the wisdom, um, especially when it comes to strategically knowing how to um, defend our truth and our liberation and our ability to move forward. And Mars is helping us to do that. Not for nothing, Pisces, I was just talking to my... Um, so in my Substack group Q&A about this to, uh, earlier on tonight, Pisces is connected to the feet. And uh, while astrologically speaking, the sun is in Aries, astronomically speaking, or if you look up at the sky, the sun is in Pisces. So there, you know, there's a lot of um, like axis overlap that happens in astrology that a lot of the time we don't talk about. Instead, people like to argue about whether this is sound or this is sound. And the truth of the matter is um, it all can work together because um, and it all will have to work together in order to collapse and be brought into the oneness point anyway as astrology evolves into what it needs to become in order to help to continue to service our evolution. But um, my guides were, were calling it Axis Astrology. Right now we're dealing with very real and pertinent Piscean and Aries themes um, that you can look at it that way because of the astronomical and astrological placements. But even if you don't look at it that way, it's all here in the chart. So no matter how you read, um, that, that's the beauty of, 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 of divine mathematics. It doesn't matter if you look up at the sky and you see the sun in Pisces or if you're going to go by this chart. If you have the ability to connect with energy because you're, you're a high frequency being, you can pull out the same story either way because it's it's a work of divinity. I hope that makes sense. And, and divinity is inf infinite. So there's always, the story can always be pulled out. It's just, are you connected with the with the are you plugged into the truth kind of um but i say that because what i was feeling coming through this weekend window was there's a lot of light body activations that are happening that's a venus in 16 degrees that's a cancerian energy is to do with the light body activations also and 16 is a cancerian degree 
Um, but where I was really feeling um, an upsurge in energy and a clearing out was in the Earth Star. And your Earth Star must be clear in order for you to connect with the, the grids of the Earth. Your um, Soul Star must be clear in order for you to connect with the grids above. And your Earth Star must be clear for you to connect with the grids below. And there's something that's happening, especially with the Earth Star, through this... Um, through this full moon eclipse and through the new moon in Aries eclipse, it's going to be a soul star alignment also. And all of the chakras are being fired up right now, repositioned in accordance with whatever system you, you align with, whether you're still with the seven chakras, 12 chakra system, 36, whatever it is that you that you see for yourself, you know, um, there's a there's a grand firing off of the energies that is occurring right now to bring you back into the the, the proper harmonics to promote the um, to promote the um, the uh, the activation, the programming, and um, it's like the output, I can't think of the word, I'm tired, of your, your, your light body. Um, Merkabic fields are being um, reestablished within you, your own biofield, but also within the biofield of the earth, the true Merkabic fields that allow for the true harmonics of the earth to come back online are happening, and there, it's happening to you also. And this Venus and Mars and Pisces is doing something also to align our earth star chakras with the ability to anchor that in through this eclipse gateway. Okay, um, I think I'm going to end it there because I'm a little bit tired. Um, I'll finish off with the nodes. The north node is in Aries at 19 degrees. The south node is in Libra at 19 degrees. Sorry, 16 degrees, not 19, 16. This is a degree of demolition. It's a degree of demolition because it's connected to the tower card and the tarot, but it's also a degree of demolition that re-establishes the grids because we're dealing with the Cancerian energy in the astrological degree. 16 is an astrological degree of Cancer, okay? The 16 number, like I said, it's a big theme. This Aries season is a big theme through this eclipse energy because it's about the demolition and the destruction that is necessary in order to reestablish the true earth grids by also completely deactivating and putting to death the old world grid system that kept us sick, that kept us um, in competition, that kept us in separation, that kept us traumatized, etc., etc., etc. And so, you know, right? I just want to give a shout out to Lilith chilling at 19 degrees Virgo, okay? Because Lilith is putting you, getting your mind right with the Aries energy. Aries is all about getting your mind right. It's about establishing the energy you need spiritually and mentally in order to, to do the thing. And then Virgo energy is about, um, is about uh, creating the schedules, the rhythms, um, the habits, the behaviors that support your vision and also support the proper output of your energy so that you're, you're not only living, like maintaining, but you're thriving. Virgo is very, very concerned with how you look after yourself and your energy. And so Lilith is here also helping to put you into alignment at the 19 degree mark. And 19, of course, is the sun. I already spoke about that. It's about what, or it's the number through which you have called back all of the fragmented aspects of self you've lost to the trauma cycles of the matrix. It's the number where your uh, past and future selves can come back into the fullness of you right in the now. It's the number through which um, all timelines that had you split and living um, alternate realities that were causing uh, distortions can can um, collapse and come into one, or the ones that don't support who you are can 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 fuck off. You know that's a nineteen degree energy, and Lilith is there. Lilith is that um, 
the 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 divine feminine energy that fights um, for fights for those of us who have been abused fights um, against the persecution fights against the bondage and so this is what's happening in us that we will take no more and then we have that Aries energy firing us up also it's like um, there's there's no more acceptance of of of, of anything that does not align with our royal truth. There's no more acceptance of anything that does not align with our golden ratio. We know who the fuck we are now. And just because the false matrix like to invert shit and make us think we were something we were not doesn't mean we haven't reconnected with the truth. And Lilith is helping us now to also ground that into reality advocate for ourselves and advocate for ourselves also by looking after ourselves and tuning into without fear those habits and things we need to do in order to maintain the energetic um, uh, reality that supports our true earth frequency okay so that's what I have for you guys I hope that this was helpful I wish you all a beautiful beautiful full moon eclipse. I will be back for the new moon in Aries um, reading in two weeks and I will share with you on the community board um, and in the next reading information about the upcoming Tarot Astrology group Q&A for the month of April as well as my small group session um, The Road Back to Wholeness uh, which will happen another group will occur in April also so I will share that with you too for those of you who are interested in um, joining me on Substack the information for that will be below as well as my full moon in Libra collaboration with the Starfire codes you can check it out there through the link below and in the comment section as well as on the community board if you'd like to donate to um, my channel to my growth to my ability to show up here to do what it is I came here to do for the collective you can do through my Ko-Fi or my PayPal. All that information is in the description box in the comment section below. I thank you for all the ways that you guys support me. I really do appreciate you. Um, if you'd like to work with me, um, the best way to go about that is to check out my website, solara.info. You can find out there um, how I work. You can find out about having a one-to-one -one soul recovery session with me, um, tarot astrology readings and reports, divine alignment readings, etc. All information is there on the website and then you can simply um, you know, contact me. You can book an appointment slot and if everything is a go, um, I will get back to you and we will get the ball rolling. Okay, so I'm sending you so much love. Happy, happy full moon. Until next time, be well.